My name is Melanie Maroney and I am a Hub GIS Specialist here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Today I'm going to show you how to edit data using the QC web app. Before we get into the app demo, let me show you how to quickly find your editing web app. Within the production portal, found through this URL, maps.mrp.usta.gov, you can go look at the top banner and click groups. Once you are in groups, it's going to show you all of the groups you're a part of. From there, you can type in editors. This will quickly get you into a view of all of the groups that you are a part of that allow editing capabilities of the data collected in the field. So if you are not seeing the group that you're looking to edit data for, go ahead and contact end user tools and they can get you added. Once you find the group that you're looking for, you can open it up and you're gonna see this homepage, which should have the app right here. You can view it and it'll open in a new tab. If you do not see your app right in the recently added content, you can go to content and you can sort by apps and it will pop up right there. In the top right corner, we have the layer list. The layer list is going to show us the sites with QC flags, all of the data, and then the related tables. We have included all data just in case there are sites where the QC flag does not pick up an error. So this just might happen from time to time. So we have added all data to be shown in every editing web app for QC. Within the map pane itself, we can zoom in. We can select points to view a pop up. And we can view the related tables. So at the bottom, you can see related table and you just click this arrow and the related records will pop up. And you will see for this one site, we have one monitoring activity that was done on 418. Just to go back, there is our pop-up. Now, if we select a pop-up for a site that has been QC'd, we are not going to have any related records because at the time of this recording, there are only QC flags with no activities at site. And that is most likely due to being, you know, beginning of the season. So as we go on throughout the season, there will be more more QC flags popping up depending on the error that the script has found. For now, they're all no activities. So that is how you select and view a pop-up and the related records. In order to zoom, you just use your scroller on your mouse. You can also use this zoom in, zoom out. And if you want to go back to the default extent, you can press this home button. This search bar up here acts as a Google search bar would, so you can enter an address or a city. Another feature of the web app is the attribute table. The attribute table will show all of the layers that are being activated in the layer list. So in order to not see them anymore, you can just unselect in here. I'm going to show you all data within this attribute table. We can see that it is like a Excel spreadsheet. So if you like to view the data that way, this is a good feature to use this attribute table. Something to note is that when you open the attribute table, it is being filtered by map extent. So in order to um, view all of the data, you would unselect this button. So right now I have 616 features within my map pane, but if I unselect the filter by map extent, it added one. In order to export the data, you can use the attribute table as well. All you have to do is go to options and export all to CSV. You can also view related records within here. So when I do that, I like to select a attribute that I'm interested in, go to options and show related records. So now it is showing me the three monitoring activities that have been associated with the point that I selected. I can do that again and see the related records for the other one I just selected. It's a quick way to view the data associated with the point you are interested in. 
I'm going to clear my selection and I'm going to collapse the attribute table. The other general map functionality that I want to point out to you is the base map tab. The base map tab contains a gallery of all of the base maps you could ever really want, and you can just choose which one you like best, or imagery can really come in handy for seeing the land under your trap. Now that we have gone over all of the map functionality, let's dive into the data filters, the editing data, and this other additional tab called select and export data. For the data filters, we have one filter that would give us the QC flags for our domestic program, and then we will have one for all data. They differ depending. So the, for the QC flag filter, we have the option to select a QC flag. As mentioned before, we only have no activities at site and we can choose the state. For the all data, we have a trap ID and we have state. So we are going to focus on the QC flags. I'm going to activate my filter. And because we only have one QC flag, I'm not going to bother selecting it, but I'm going to choose a state. Let's go with Louisiana. So now I'm only going to have the QC flagged sites in Louisiana. The only data that's going to show up in my QC flags layer down here is Louisiana. Now I'm going to show you how to edit your data. There are a few ways to get started. You can either have the edit data tab open and select a point which will populate this pop up here. You could be in a different tab, select the point you want to edit, activate the pop up, go to the bottom right hand corner and click smart editor. It's going to do the same thing and pop up in the pop up or you can go to the Select and Export Data tab, select a box around the ones you want to edit, click these three dots, and go to Smart Editor. And here you can see I selected four, so they are showing up here. And I can scroll through them up in the top. So now that you have a few ways to get started editing, let me just go back to the first way and click my point. Here are all of the attributes for this entry. And depending on what the QC flag says, I can edit the main trap or I can edit the activities. In this case, it looks like I need to pay attention to the activities related table. In order to find the related table, I just have to scroll down to the very bottom. And you see this is collapsed, so we need to expand it, scroll down again. And then you can see the activities table here. It has zero activities like the QC flag says, so that means I need to add one. This is also where you could see activities that might need to be edited depending on what the QC flag says, so you can click it if there is one already there and edit it that way. But in this case I'm going to create a new feature. So this is the activities table. I can enter anything that needs to be entered and then press save. Save is very important. If you do not click it, it will not activate your changes. And this is what it looks like when you make an edit. Save knows that I just modified something and it is asking me if I wanna make it permanent. I don't, so I'm not gonna press delete because that would delete the whole point. I'm gonna press cancel. And that way, none of my changes were made permanent. So just remember, save makes your changes permanent. The script for QC flags runs every night. So once you edit a point with a flag, the fixed entry will still be there in your map until the QC flag script runs again. This warranted a QC tracking field that we called QC status. The QC status field can be used so that the editor can mark points which they have already edited and don't need to be displayed in the QC flag layer anymore. The QC flag status can either be populated with complete no exceptions and complete with exceptions. Complete no exceptions would be for when a for when someone completes the QC on a point and they expect the QC flag to be removed the next time the script runs, so they fix that error. Complete with exceptions is for when the entry has been checked but the QC flag is not applicable 
and the program does not need to edit the entry any further. As an example, say there's a QC flag set up to flag traps that were set before a certain date to weed out potential entry errors, and that flag grabs a point that falls out of the defined date range, but the specific point is flagged it's correct and it's going to be an exception to that flag rule. So in this case, mark it as complete with exceptions. This will allow you to filter out ones that have been reviewed but are still showing up as flags. So let's edit a QC flag and then mark the QC status so that it disappears from the QC flag layer, but we can still see it in the alt data layer. So I'm going to click my point within the edit data pane and I'm going to look at the QC flag. And just an FYI, this is a test point, so this is not correct data, just like the rest of this video. So under QC flag, we can see that it's missing a site name. So let's go up to the site name. Test site name. So under QC flag, I'm not going to edit this entry. I'm going to leave it there. What I'm going to do is mark the point as complete with no exceptions. Now that I have done that, I'm going to save it, exit out of um, the editing pane, and we can see it's not in my QC flag layer anymore. It's filtered to not show it anymore. But let's say I just wanted to check it again. I can go to my all data layer and we see I have three points. I'm going to activate the filter, and then I'm going to say QC status is complete, no exceptions. And it's going to show me the point that I edited. And that is how you use the QC status field. The last tab that I wanted to show you was the select and export data. We kind of went over this briefly when we were selecting the points to edit. Let me go in depth a little more. So you can see once I got in the tab, the select option was activated. When it's not activated, you won't see the option to add a box. So just press select and click and drag. So now I can go to the ones that we have selected, which is the QC flagged option. And I can view it in the attribute table. I can show the related records. For all of those sites, which there are none, I can export these to CSV from the attribute table, or I can do it here. I can zoom to them. I'm going to clear, go back home, and I think that wraps up the demo. So thank you very much.